Yes, sucker. Eric Harrison here for the Death Twitch doing another excuse to drink. I mean, a drunken Terry. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Fuck. <laughs> why, why am I laughing? You know what? Mind your own business. <laughs> We're going to watch Halloween, The Curse of Chubby Myers. <laughs> um, yeah, this movie, whatever. It had to be, it had to be watched and drank in too. Now, a few things. I always have to make my announcements and shit at the beginning of the drunken Terry. First of all, whoever owns the yellow Volvo, you left your lights on in the parking lot. Uh, two, I, want, I know the first thing everybody's going to say is, well, why didn't you watch, why didn't you do a drunken Terry for the producer's cut? Well, to answer your question, nosy, it's because I think this one will be actually more fun to get drunk to and make fun of. Tell me I'm wrong. Anyway, um, but I, I'll probably, re I think I'm going to review the producer's cut. So just chill. Just relax, okay? Damn. Let's just watch the, th the shitty theatrical cut and have a chuckle and a few beers. And now the other thing is, um, we're watching Jamie give birth. And it's, uh, it's awkward. <laughs> um, the other thing is, yeah, so I'm always constantly trying to figure out the best way to record audio for these so bear with me if this is too loud if it's too low every one i do is a it's, it's a, a learning exper experience sometimes i get them too low sometimes i have them way too loud i'm figuring it out one drunken terry at a time i actually have a, a i got a new toy in the mail and I, you know i'm always talking about how Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of money to go around, but when I do spend some money, I try and spend it on stuff that will improve the quality of my content. So I bought a, a scissor arm for my mic and a uh, pop filter. So, yeah, doing my best to make these sound as awesome as possible. Now, you know the drill. It's time to talk about what the fuck we're drinking. I got Red Hook uh, Extra Special Bitter Ale again. That's what I drank in my last drunken terry it was so fucking good i had to get it again look at this scene i like it i like the candle lighting that's awesome it really it's probably not true but it really looks like they just use flames to light the scene and it looks badass now let's drink beers and talk about this movie first of all i actually had to pound one down just to prepare to watch this shit <laughs> i know it has a quite a fan base i don't understand why but uh i don't consider this movie as insulting as halloween resurrection it's not insulting because they actually tried to make a movie and they tried to do something different so it's not insulting like halloween resurrection is it's just a fucking train wreck that's all it is to me to me i don't know plenty of people out there don't agree like i said it's got its fan base people seem to like it um you know, I respect that they tried, but that doesn't mean it's not a fucking disaster. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is the theatrical cut, and it's even probably even more of a disaster than the producer's cut, which I've only seen one time. Uh, I remember it being better, but um, not by a whole lot. Uh, let's fucking drink. How about that? First of all, we didn't even get Daniel Harris back to play Jamie because they didn't want to pay her, apparently, is what she says. Of course, who knows? Who knows with the Hollywood politics? They just, I would side with her, though. That probably sounds about right. They probably was like, hey, we want you to come back and die in our movie, but we're not going to give you much of anything. So she was like, fuck off. You know what? I'm going to drink to Daniel Harris right now. <laughs> This beer is, is love. <laughs> it is love. It may have, it may have instantly made itself into my top five. And that's pretty impressive. Red Hook, guys, check it out. I, I, I approve. Here comes Mike. Oh. He's like, bitch, did you really think I wasn't going to kill you? Do you really think you were going to get away? Oh. That's pretty cool. See, good, you know, they got good deaths in this movie. I'll give them that. 
I like that. Pinning her to a spike. Although he's he really is kind of looks out of shape and unhealthy. <laughs> Michael, you need to hit the gym, brother. <laughs> I hate to be the one to tell you. You really let yourself go, dude. Because uh, Nick Castle in the original Halloween was a skinny motherfucker. Well, that's because people were skinny in general in the 70s. But, uh, yeah, Nick Castle, he was a he was a toothpick. But I, I liked it. It just made him seem like... Michael Myers was just like an every, every man. He was just like... He could be anybody. He's just some dude. He didn't get his extra strength or anything from the fact that he was physically imposing... Just because he had, like, a supernatural element to him. The evil. The evil made him strong. But anyway. We got this movie here, which I believe was the uh, first movie that Paul Rudd ever made. And unfortunately, the last movie that Donald Pleasance ever made. Paul Rudd, he's pretty awesome. I like him. I really always enjoy everything he does. Although his performance in this movie... It's really creepy. And I don't know if that was his choice or if that was a result of the director either telling him to act that way or not giving him enough direction. And, oh, I just drank to Daniel Harris. I say we fucking drink now to Donald Pleasance because this was his last one. Fucking thanks so much, dude, for sticking it out through all these sequels. You certainly didn't have to keep making Halloween movies, but you did. Us, the fans, we fucking love you for it. Miss ya. I'm drinking. What are you fools drinking? You know what? I have not found the beast here where I live now in Washington. That makes me sad. Although, I found a great replacement with Red Hook. But still, I'm going to miss the beast, man. I'm going to miss the fucking beast. <laughs> still want them to be the sponsor of the Death Twitch. <laughs> Alright, let us I guess we have to talk about this. Is that a fucking Power Ranger? No way. Is that a Power Ranger? Did you see that Power Ranger? <laughs> I'm like, let's talk about the movie. But now I'm just talking about Power Rangers. Yep. It is a Power Ranger, isn't it? Holy shit. That's right. I remember when Power Rangers premiered in America. I'm not sure if it had premiered somewhere else before. But I remember when it premiered in America, and it was back when I was all into uh, martial arts. So, you know, I was like, oh, it was these crazy guys in costumes doing martial arts. That's going to be awesome. And then I watched the first episode, and I was like, nope. <laughs> No Power Rangers for me, thanks. It was a little bit too goofy. And I was a, I was a kid too. Well, I was a teen. I was like fourteen. Uh, here I am talking over titties. What the fuck? <laughs> I hope you were not listening to me and you were admiring those babies. <laughs> I would be disappointed if you actually were listening to my Power Ranger talk and <laughs> not looking at those boobies. <laughs> Horror movie, gotta have a girl in her underwear. Yeah, the the, the best horror movies, though, they don't, even, they don't even wear the underwear. In fact, the one I'm reviewing right now, it's got plenty of TNA in it. Mm, man, there's even some B. <laughs> T, A, and B. And B, for those of you that may not understand what I'm talking about, is Bush. <laughs> there, I said it. <laughs> All right, Paul Rudd, looking creepy. The guy never ages, though. Isn't that weird? That's fucking weird. This movie's like 20 years old. He fucking looks almost exactly the same. That's kind of creepy. I think he's a vampire. Candles again. Well, I like that, though, man. You know what? When I finally make a horror movie, I'm not even going to have real lights. It's going to be all candles and torches. <laughs> I don't care. It's not even going to be set like in a place where that's appropriate. <laughs> Of a hospital scene? Oh, this lit by candles. Fuck it. <laughs> it looks good, though. It looks good on film. Natural light, man. 
You got to make more use of natural light. Hey, it's Donald. Woo! Loomis. You know what? I can't hear shit. Let me turn some shit up. Over here. Turn it up over here. So I'm a little buzzed because I pounded down that beer in order to watch this movie. I might be extra silly tonight. And I'm pounding down this next one, too. I'm taking these beers down to Pound Town. <laughs> so stupid. Um. Yeah, so I look at this as an excuse just to fucking rip on this movie. You know? If that's that's the enjoyment that I get out of it. Some people take, take this shit seriously. I'm like, hey, Mystery Science Theater that shit. Otherwise, it, it ain't worth it. Movie driving. What is up with movie driving? Why do they always steer around so crazy and then not look where they're going? Come on, man. You're actors. Your fucking whole purpose is to portray realism as best as possible. And everybody looks like dumbasses behind the wheel of a car in the movies. <laughs> it's going to be a rant. <laughs> it's going to be a rant. It's going to be me going, what the fuck? Damn, she looks like she got beat. So, yeah, I guess what? In this one, Haddonfield had banned Halloween at this point. It's always an interesting concept. Um, it seems like it, they after if, if after Michael Myers has attacked your town on Halloween so many times, you probably would ban it. <laughs> um, but, uh... I went the opposite way with my script, which you may or may not have read by now. My half a script. Uh, it's a fan script. It never was really written to be like, I'm going to make this one day. I just wanted to fuck around with the Halloween idea. And in mine, I made it the opposite. I was like, let's go the other way. Let's make it so they they view Halloween as a... An, uh, like a, an opportunity to show strength rather than fear. So... Anyway, go go read my script, you bastard. Oh, look, they're drinking. We should drink, too. I'm drinking. <laughs> he wants Loomis to come back to Smith's Grove. You know, he's, he's really old, though. <laughs> I mean... Even I feel like there must be some kind of agenda there. If I was Loomis, I'd be going, wait a minute, what? You know I'm really old, and I'll die soon. Why do you want me to come back? And you guys never listened to me when I warned you about Michael Myers. So f take your fucking proposal and shove it sideways right up your ass. That's how I handle things. <laughs> if I were Loomis... I'd be telling everybody, to, I'd be telling the whole fucking town of Haddonfield to shove it up their ass. Because <laughs> he tried to save them and nobody would listen, so fuck them. Right? <laughs> it is going to be a rant. Sometimes, sometimes it's just a rant and Terry. <laughs> this poor baby. You know what? This kid, he had no choice in the matter whether he was going to be in this movie. <laughs> That's not right. <laughs> that ain't fair this kid exists out there somewhere and he has to live with this he has to live with the curse of the curse of Michael Myers <laughs> I feel sorry for that kid <laughs> like hey weren't you the baby and no what no I wasn't whatever you heard it's not true fuck off <laughs> shove it up your ass sideways <laughs> I'm drunk early in the drunk <laughs> Which is probably the only way I'm going to get through this. It wouldn't be a drunken Terry, though, if I did not complain about how fucking hot it is. <laughs> it's true. Oh, it's like being in a sauna. Because I have to, like, I have to shut everything down. I had to shut the fan off. I had to fucking cover the air conditioning vent. Oh, I need to get rid of all those background sounds. And then, and then it just gets hella hot. It 
see, this movie came out in 1995, and the previous installment, Halloween 5, had, had come out in, what, 89? So, quite a, you know, quite a break. I, even though I was a Halloween fan, I had kind of just forgotten, like, I kind of just was like, they're done, I guess, you know. I didn't really expect more. I really didn't. And then Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers came out, and then my initial reaction was excitement. And then I watched it, and being young at the time, uh, 15 or 16, I didn't know what to make of it, but I was just happy to see Michael Myers again. You know, it's one of those cases where over the years, as I grow older, and as I watched it more and more, I was like... I'm thinking this ain't the best one in the series. But as I stated, when it came out and I watched it, I remember I remember the night I rented it and went to a friend's house and we stayed up in the dark, you know, with just the TV on watching it. I was totally happy. I was like, I'm getting my Michael Myers fix. Fuck it, I didn't care. But in the long run, you need more quality to a movie. It can't just be... That you see your favorite killer kill somebody. It's, it's got to be something more to the movie than that. And they really tried. It looks like Halloween. It really does. They. I'll give them. I'll give the fucking the the, the cinematographer and the uh, production designer or the uh, sorry, whoever did the the set designs and stuff. All of that, the cinematography, the set design, yeah, shit looks really good. It looks like fall. It, it screams Halloween. That's awesome. And yeah, if you go back and you watch my review, I was praising that in the review as well. Uh, in fact, um, I think it was it was like just yesterday or the day before, somebody on Facebook was asking me about. Uh, which one had the most Halloween feel? And I said, you know, I may not be the biggest fan of Halloween 6, but I'll be damned if that movie doesn't really display the Halloween season. Look at that. Pumpkins everywhere. You got the lighting just right. And later on, they show, like, the leaves on the trees turning. Yeah, it looks good. It's too bad that there was such a, I don't know, what the you know, kind of power struggle between the studio and the director and the writer and all that. Good death scenes too though. So I mean, I don't completely hate this movie. Don't don't ever let that be said. <laughs> I mean, I give it a hard time, but there's some good shit in here. Although Michael's mask is not one of those things. <laughs> it looks Terrible, dude. His mask looks like ass. It looks like somebody somebody made homemade. It was like, look at my Michael Myers mask. I guess that's what it had come to. He just got tired of trying to locate a new mask every time. So he was like, I'm just gonna start making them. And they're you know, they're not good. <laughs> He's still learning. <laughs> Give the guy some slack. He's still learning how to make masks. <laughs> Just be glad it wasn't paper mache. Oh, I guess from now we're talking about Rob Zombie's Halloween because he made paper mache masks. Alrighty then. Look at... He's coming to get you. This guy. Fuck. Fuck this character. The actor, according to all the interviews I've seen, he's you know way cool dude. He's maybe too good of an actor because he played this character so well... I hate him. Look at, this is what I'm talking about. Look at it. Oh my God, it looks, it really looks like fall. That looks like Halloween. That really looks like Halloween. I like it. 
Yeah, and then they pan over and show the whole street. It really looks like fucking fall. Good job, guys. Probably one of the few Halloween movies that really looked like Halloween. That guy's really 90s. <laughs> Look at how 90s that guy is. <laughs> I fucking, hey, I, I was a teenager in the 90s. That was my shit. I looked pretty much like that dude, actually. <laughs> this guy is such a douchebag. Look at her. <laughs> what the fuck? Fuck, why do you stay with him? He's clearly a douche hole. Leave his ass. I already don't know what's going on in this movie. Oh, damn. He just called her out. <laughs> I want to stab this guy already. <laughs> this is one of those times where I'm really rooting for Michael to kill somebody. God, he's such a dick. <laughs> he's such a dick. He doesn't stop. There's like never a moment where he can just be cool. He looks for every opportunity to just be a bastard. Now I know why Michael Myers kills. <laughs> and it's because of this guy. Now I get it. I, I totally forgive all the innocent people that Michael has killed because this one douchebag made me realize sometimes murder is justified. <laughs> He's so pink, too. Look at how pink he is. <laughs> it's not even a white guy. He's pink. Yeah, you almost got your nuts shanked. And you know what? He should have done it, too. He should have shanked him. Of course, you know the fucking guy would be in, like, the ambulance on the way to the hospital. Go, That's what's wrong with this generation. Just stabbing a guy in the nuts all the time. <laughs> He'd be bitching the whole way. <laughs> Little brat stabbed me in my fucking right testicle. In the right one. That was my good test. <laughs> he stabbed it. <laughs> What a dick. That girl looks really 90s, too. <laughs> oh, jump scare. I totally jumped. Didn't even poo. Didn't even make me poo. That guy's wearing Doc Martens and shit. It's like an advertisement for the fucking 90s. <laughs> <laughs> oh god I'm gonna finish this beer and open another one I think I'm drinking irresponsibly this time because I'm gonna blame it on that guy that was a, that was a bitch I'm gonna blame it on the bitch guy it's his fault I'm drinking <laughs> he pushed me to it Did, did he stutter? <laughs> oh, good God. Why, you know what? Everybody should have abandoned the town of Haddonfield. Don't you agree? I think I make a good point. I think the whole town should have just abandoned. Fuck, I've been through ghost towns before. It, that's a real thing. It happens. If you got a place where every... Well, not every, but like... Way too often on Halloween, some unstoppable, immortal, crazy killer comes out of the woodwork and starts slashing people. You should probably just turn it in and go to another town. 
But then I guess we wouldn't have them. I mean, that, oh, that could be Halloween. Ghost Town. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm writing another script. <laughs> Shit. I'm working on that right now. I'm going to stop this drunken Terry. All right. So new, new, new Halloween script. The town has been abandoned. It is a ghost town. And some kids go there to check it out, dumbasses. And guess what they find? Michael Myers is still roaming the streets. Oh, my God. This is good. This is Oscar gold. <laughs> Look at Paul Rudd look insane. He looks insane. I like that they uh, mentioned Russellville. That's a nice little touch. Oh, my God. I want to mention something right now. <laughs> the copy of this that I'm watching looks like shit. Because I bought it on like one of those eight movie packs because I didn't want to actually pay for The Curse of Michael Myers. So I bought it on like an eight. I was like, I might as well get a bunch of movies if I want to pay for this shit. But of course, to fit it on that DVD, they had to make the quality look like butt. <laughs> so it doesn't look all that great. But you know what? Your quality probably looks like awesome. You know what? I envy you. Or do I? Yes, I do. I guess I do. If I had to watch it, might as well look good. Paul Rudd looking creepy through the whole thing. Oh yeah, nobody saw that blood there the whole time. Or the trail that leads him to the baby. And nobody found a baby in this building. <laughs> Come on, dude. People like this shit? <laughs> really? <laughs> um, I know every time I go to the damn bus station There's a fucking baby in the counter <laughs> Come on <laughs> I can suspend my disbelief To a certain extent But really Thank God for Paul Rudd That baby would never would have been found because apparently nobody pays any uh, fucking attention. Thank God for him. <laughs> At some point, like years down the road, somebody would have finally opened that shit and found a dead ass baby in there. And a bunch of cobwebs, because apparently nobody looks around and cleans or nothing. Yes, right and Terry. Right and Terry in it up. <laughs> Fuck it. There's the thorn symbol. There's one more thing I actually, I like the symbol. I don't like the fucking idea of the thorn cult. Ooh, listen to this. 90s music. <laughs> I, I think that is Collective Soul playing right now. This song was on the radio regularly. Yeah, you heard this, like, every day if you were alive and you listened to the radio. It's a good song, though. I dig it. Look at the leaves. Look at how they're yellow. Oh, even though some of those in the background are green. <laughs> we won't dwell on that. I also want you to note how long her fucking dress is. Did you see that shit goes down to the grass? Why you? Why is your dress got to be so long? You know, I already saw you in your underwear. You don't need to cover up every inch of skin. <laughs> your mom's going to be okay. Burned. <laughs> I want to know. I really want to know if... If it was his choice to act this way or if the director told him, hey, look as creepy as possible. This bitch, he's just trying to help a baby he found in a fucking bus station. And then she's going to be like, oh, security, could you come get this guy trying to help a baby that's dying? What a bitch. We got dicks and bitches in this movie left and right. I am drunk already. 
It's going to be one of those. I'm about to open another one too, fuckers. Join me. Get extra drunk on this one with me. Come on. You know you want to. <laughs> Peer pressure. <laughs> I mean, if you're of age. I had to put that disclaimer out there. You little bastards that are under whatever drinking age. And you, you sip the Kool-Aid. Put that beer down. But everyone else, let's get fucked up. Time to open another beer. Another beer. Another beer. Time to open another beer. I can't believe how good it is. You know, I like to experiment and try a lot of different kinds. I can't get it open. It's like a sign. Hold up. Hold up. Come on. Fuck. Damn, that one was extra hard to get open. As I was saying, I like to I like to experiment and drink a lot of different kinds of beers, but really a lot of them are just kind of meh, and some are just blah. Once in a while, you find one that changes your life. <laughs> oh, I sense a death coming, but not before she walks around all over scared that there might be somebody stalking her through the house corona light also a good beer well not light i don't drink corona light <laughs> I'm all, I'm all, i drink some i drink like bud light sometimes or whatever if you're gonna drink corona you just drink corona stop with the light shenanigans so why is she going to die it's just because she's in the Strode house or whatever. The Myers house. I don't even know. Like I said, I can't even keep track of what's happening in this movie. But she didn't break any rules. Right? She didn't have sex as far as we know. Well, I guess she did because she has children. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, that's kind of sex is deemed okay in the horror world. If you're married and you have sex to have kids, it's all good. It's that premarital sex for fun that the slashers don't like. <laughs> yeah, she's going to get axed. She doesn't deserve it either. Or maybe she does. Maybe Michael's like, why do you stay with that guy? Do your whole family a favor and fucking take him and leave him. But no, you stay with him. That is your sin. And that's why I kill you. <laughs> Loomis just made her poo. <laughs> you can tell. And he liked it too. He was like, yeah, got another one. <laughs> Steven, somebody smeared some jelly on your chest. What is that, grape? Is that grape? <laughs> Why did they do that? I feel like the baby is so complacent. It's just like, I, like I'm a baby. There's nothing I can do about this, but I really don't want to be in this movie. <laughs> Like, I really do not want to be in this fucking movie. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Loomis, you give the best speeches. Yes. Oh. God. He knows how to talk about the shape. He has so much passion about describing Michael's evil. <laughs> you gotta fucking love it. <laughs> he really wants you to understand how evil Michael is. 
That shit's funny. Barry Sims. So Howard Stern was actually supposed to be in this movie. Because Howard Stern was blowing up at the time. Uh, I don't know. I, you know what? I don't know why he wound up not being in the movie. But the whole Barry Sims character was written for Howard Stern. I think that would have made this movie better. <laughs> Sorry, I made you poo. <laughs> Have that effect on people. <laughs> and babies. <laughs> of course, babies just poo as it is, but still. Sometimes you can tell it's, it's a little extra poo. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> uh. Okay, that's, that whole shot was a either a ripoff or a callback to the original Halloween. At least they tried. I think that's what my, if there was a pull quote for the Death Twitch on the cover of Halloween, the Curse of Michael Myers, it should be. It's it's a fucking disaster, but at least they tried. <laughs> that would be the most honest thing I could say about this movie. Yeah, he knew. Oh, look, he found just another reason to be pissed off. <laughs> Any reason to be angry. Give me that bottle. God damn it. I'm so angry. I might just record a drunken Terry. You call that drinking? <laughs> Poser. Poser alert. That ain't drinking. Get just get out of get out of the house, get in the car and drive. Fucking as fast as you can. Don't slow down going down the stairs. Don't look all crazy. Just get in the car and get the fuck out. I'm actually trying to save your life, lady. You should probably listen to me. But hey, if you want an axe to the face, I mean, that's up to you. <laughs> if that's really what you're into. Oh, she pooed. <laughs> Luckily, she was wearing the pins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, this is why I told you. I was trying to help you, lady. I said get out as fast as possible, not answer the fucking phone. <laughs> you know what? You deserve this axe. You, yeah, you deserve that shit. Now, let me ask you a question. <laughs> Would you consider it an honor to be killed by Michael Myers? Hmm? Hmm? Or would you actually try and survive? Think about it. Think about it. You'd become famous once you got killed by Michael. And if you survive, well, you know what? Really, there's no surviving because he's going to come back next year and then the year after and the year after that. He's going to get you. He's going to get you. The boogeyman is coming. <laughs> I'd like to think somebody out there would actually find it on, like honorable to be murdered by Michael Myers. <laughs> is that a stretch? Is that too much? I like how they're like, Whoever the costume designer was was like, hey, she's a redhead, let's put her in red and green. That's that's the only colors that redheads can ever wear. <laughs> red and green. That's all you get. You gotta look like Christmas at all times. <laughs> hey, you know this is a Halloween movie, you should put her in fucking orange and black. Damn. Missed opportunity right there. I 
think your mom is in the washing machine, actually. Interesting uh, choice. Look at all those knives. Holy fuck. Interesting choice, Michael was like, after he killed... I'm going to put this one in the washing machine. Yeah, that, that's the trick. <laughs> that's got to be... I mean, think about everything that Michael goes through. It's all kind of... It is work, you know? It's probably... He considers that as work. That's his career. He's like, shit, today I gotta kill like four people. First I gotta stalk this guy for like two hours and then I'm gonna kill him. Where am I gonna put him? Should I put him in the garage? Uh, is there any way to stuff his ass down the garbage disposal? Damn, so many fucking choices. Now I gotta stalk and kill this woman in her house. What can I do with her? Washing machine. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ticket. <laughs> Imagine being Michael Myers. Look at, you, you know, we don't give him enough credit. The fucking guy's got a lot of work he's got to take care of. A lot of decisions that got to be made. <laughs> you can't just kill somebody and leave their body right there. You got to put it somewhere and do some shit with it. I sense another jump scare coming. Oh, it's just going to be her finding creepy Paul Rudd. <laughs> there he is. That was your jump scares. It's Paul Rudd looking creepy. Oh, fuck. He's got a baby. And he knows how to use it. <laughs> With your son. You know he's got a baby in his hands. You should be concerned about that first. I'd be like, what are you doing with that baby? <laughs> that ain't your baby. <laughs> Name that movie on the screen. I can't. I was asking you to. <laughs> I'm not saying I know it. But if you do, you should name the movie. Wow, look at her. What? Oh, it's Phantom. But I've never actually seen the movie. That's right, I fucking said it. That's right, I haven't seen every horror movie ever made. Come at me, bro. <laughs> I don't know everything that's right. But I'm getting there. He's got, a, he's got a fucking AK on the wall. <laughs> wow. And it's there for decoration, too. You can tell. You know, he, he knows that guns don't work on the sheep. So he's like, let me just put this AK on the wall as decoration. Not now. Listen to your son. Pay attention to your fucking kid. Damn. Parenting fail. This kid's got no charisma. Sorry, child actor. Who is now probably an adult. Probably. <laughs> is an adult. But hey, hey, I gotta call him out sometimes. That kid had no charisma. That baby's got wider range. <laughs> oh, the baby stopped crying because a woman held it. Oh, Mother's Touch. Nothing cliche about that. I like his room. He's got, I mean, aside from the AK <laughs> on the wall, he's, yeah, I like his, the way he decorates his shit. Ooh, this is our plot. I guess we should probably pay attention. Psh, if you can follow any of this shit. I, you know, 
I applaud them for trying to bring this character back. The original, or not the, but, you know, the character of Tommy Doyle from the original Halloween. I don't buy that this is Tommy Doyle. I guess it's because of how crazy Paul Rudd plays him. Now, would the events of the original Halloween have had a negative impact on Tommy Doyle? Sure. Hell yeah, of course. But would he be this insane and detached from reality? I don't know. I don't buy it. And why the fuck is everybody just living in Haddonfield? You know, if I was Tommy, if I was a little Tommy Doyle, I would have got as far fucking away from Haddonfield, Illinois as possible. I wouldn't live in the same town where a mass murderer keeps killing people every Halloween. <laughs> Ranting, Terry. Just saying. Just saying. Don't go back to your... Yeah, listen to this guy who stayed in the same town where people get murdered all the time. Damn, Donald Pleasant was a short little fuck. <laughs> he had little little man syndrome. This is a cool shot right here. See, I respect good cinematography. You better believe that. It's when the story falls apart. Is that Catwoman in the background? Oh my god, it is. Look at Catwoman. <laughs> oh, we get some more explanations about uh, Halloween and Samhain. A long time ago. That's cool, you know. Even if it doesn't pan out, at least they tried to, you know, educate us on the origins of Halloween and Samhain. There's that fucking man in black there for no real reason. No reason. Why was he hanging out at that place watching Paul Rudd walk around? <sighs> I just got to let it go. I just got to drink beer and let it go. <laughs> If I try, if I think about it too much, I'm just gonna get really pissed off. I call shenanigans. You don't know any of that. You're making shit up, lady. Making shit the fuck up, and I don't buy it. Oh, was that it? Was that supposed to be our man in black? It was just the, the, the Howard Stern wannabe. Alright, I'm drinking. I can't handle it. <laughs> this character is annoying. Like I said... Would rather have seen Stern in there. <laughs> that guy was drinking and driving. Look at him. <laughs> Look at him. Why are the lights on? Because that woman got killed in the daytime and they didn't really need these all the lights in the house on. I'm sorry. I know I'm just calling it all out. We got another cool death coming up. It's going to be awesome. Watching this guy get blown the fuck up. He's like, who am I going to be a dick to now? Now I'm going to have to find a whole other family. I have to be cool at first just so I can lure them in. And then I can resume being a douchebag. It looks like that fool is wearing a bad wig. I don't think he is, though. I think that's his actual hair. 
but it looks like a terrible wig. Um, I believe this fool's death scene, the original death scene, was different. And I think they went back and, and tried to make it more exciting. Well, they succeeded with that one. <laughs> Is she clean? <laughs> Is she ready yet? <laughs> So Michael's just stayed there at this place. He's like, I want to also kill this other guy when he sh eventually shows up. So I'm going to stick around and turn all the lights on. He was probably sitting around watching TV, and then he heard the guy pull up and knock the bike over. So he's oh, i got to get ready. He's coming in. I'm going to get ready to kill him. That'd be funny if he pulled her out and she was all shrunk. <laughs> now you know how midgets are made <laughs> oh yeah oh. <laughs> who put their reds in with the whites you fucking bastards <laughs> Yes, you deserve, you deserve this, you fucking prick. <laughs> Does it hurt? Looks like it hurts. I hope every moment that goes by excruciating pain, you're regretting every moment you were ever a bastard. And then we get kaboom. Oh, shit. Looks like a... Watermelon at a Gallagher fucking show. <laughs> I like how whoever whoever was in charge of this was like, hey, we got to have flames in front of every shot right here. That'd be cool, right? I seen it in another movie. Let's do it in ours. I'm just I'm just fucking around. It is cool, but I have seen that. I've I, I specifically remember that from the Lost Boys, and then it was probably done in plenty of movies before that. But yeah, the whole flames in the forefront. Yeah, let's have the flames. Yeah, it's cool. That'll be cool. People will love it. And she just dropped a bomb on you. <laughs> he didn't even know. Ah, all right, fools. What's going on over there? How you enjoying the movie? How you enjoying your drink? Are you really enjoying it, though? Because I think you could probably be enjoying it more by having a chugging contest with me, motherfucks, right now. Ready? Your reputation's on the line, you motherfucker. Right now. Here we go. I know you're like, oh, Eric, I'm so drunk already. I can't have enough. Fuck you, you pussy. Time to drink. Here we go. One, two, three, chug! Oh, yeah. All right, you're cool. You're cool. If you can keep up with me, you're cool. <laughs> I am really I'm feeling it I, I'll just say that I'm probably slurring my words and shit okay Michael Myers was just at the house and now he's in this guy's van why would it what the f fuck that makes no sense at all all right, hold up. Hold the goddamn presses. 
Mikey, he's all. All right, let me kill this woman. Even though she didn't break any of the rules. And then, I'm going to hang out for a while. Kill her dick of a husband. And then there's this specific van across town. I need to go and get inside real quick in order to kill some random radio show host. Oh, people wonder why I don't like this fucking movie. You know what? I'm letting the fucking rage come out. God damn it. Fuck. <laughs> I don't like it when it doesn't make sense. Consistently. It's alright if you don't make sense fucking once in a while. But you can't always just know it makes sense. Alright. It's on now. It's on. <laughs> the rage is on. Fuck it. I'm drunk. And I'm angry. This movie makes no goddamn sense because it's the theatrical cut. And I guess the, the producer's cut makes a bit more sense. But still, <laughs> this is what they offer. You know what? That is a reason to be angry for anybody. For anybody. A fan of this movie or not. That's a reason to be angry. That this is what was offered to Halloween fans. This is what was offered to the Halloween community. And it didn't make any sense. Okay, at what point did he put this bastard in the tree? And how did nobody see him fucking lugging a body up into the tree? Ugh, dude, the anger is real. <laughs> it is real. I, mean, I think I'm... <laughs> they truly should have just released the producer's cut straight to theaters. I think I wouldn't be as angry right now. I would still be confused. I still probably wouldn't like the movie, but I don't think I would be as pissed off. This theatrical cut is a goddamn disgrace. Oh, look, the body fell out just in time, the way it does in horror movies. <sighs> Loomis just showed up. <laughs> what the hell? Where did he even come from? <laughs> Why do people like this shit? <laughs> I don't get it. <clears throat> I have to change this to it's gonna be called Halloween Six. Angry and Terry. That doesn't really roll off the tongue very, very well. <laughs> Look, more candles. I love that, though. I'll, I'll give it up for the, the, the whoever decided half the scenes need to be lit with candles. Titties. <clears throat> Itty bitty titties. <laughs> but still titties. <laughs> Notice, <laughs> you notice how I was in... <laughs> Mid comment, and I just had to stop everything to talk about boobs. <laughs> she was more nips than tits, but you know, there's no complaint. No complaints there. <laughs> no, no further comments about that. <laughs> we need to move on from that comment. Michael is so courteous, handing a guy his towel and shit. Really? I mean, <laughs> that's a conscious choice that he had to have made. And wasn't he just over there killing Barry Sims and putting his ass in a tree and now he's back at the fucking house? And why did the... Why did they go back to the house and just immediately have sex? I thought they were expecting the whole crowd and radio show to show up. <sighs> Why does it make no sense? You know what? I have to I have to issue an apology. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was going to be this fucking fucking angry. <laughs> but I hope you enjoy my anger. I hope you enjoy my frustration. I hope it gets you off, you sick fuck. <laughs> I'm going to finish this one off and open another one. Because, let's see, we got about 
27 more minutes, I can get drunker and angrier and see if that happens. Michael just had sex with her. <laughs> He's like, I penetrated her. That's what sex is, right? Well, I, I did her. I did her hard. <laughs> Scored another one. <laughs> see oh okay about to open it up but first I actually I have to go and um, blow my nose get the sniffle thing going on and you don't want to hear that so I'm gonna go do that I'll be as quick as possible I'll be back to rant and bitch before you know it a shitty movie at least I got good beer and good friends aww aww it's true you guys are the bomb thanks for joining me uh, watching good and bad movies I think one of the reasons why they are drunken Terry's is because sometimes you fucking need a drink when you watch these movies you know what I'm saying you just really need a drink Oh, fuck. There's your dead friends. Who we really almost didn't get to know at all. We saw them for a brief second at the school. And then at the festival thing. And then they're dead. <laughs> we really didn't get to know those characters, did we? Alright, opening the next one. You better be opening another one, too. I expect... You guys to be able to keep up over here. Over here. Look at it, it's Chubby Myers. <laughs> he just had McDonald's and he's ready to kill. That's what he looks like. <laughs> he looks like Michael Myers looks like he eats at McDonald's probably a little too much. <laughs> he did the whole super size me challenge and <laughs> it didn't work out for him. <laughs> body fell out just wait i thought she was in the washer she wasn't in the washer so what was in the washer that was so bloody just the sheets was it just the sheets oh my sh my bad fuck I, I can admit when i was wrong i thought that bitch was in the washer apparently it was just the sheets that's how nice michael actually is he may throw an axe into your face but when he bloodies up your sheets he'll wash them <laughs> he'll wash them that's funny it just goes to show how I, I'm not an expert on this movie because it's I just it's, it's one of those in the series that I definitely have seen the least I would say Halloween 6 and Resurrection yeah, those are the two that I've seen the least amount of times. I like how there's a pumpkin in every shot. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the shot is, where it's pointed, what angle. There's always a fucking pumpkin that's awesome. <laughs> All right, what is happening in this goddamn movie? Did we get to the cult yet? That hasn't even happened yet. 
That's what you get for stepping over Michael like he ain't going to fucking grab your leg. If these people would listen to me, <laughs> if everybody just got out of Haddonfield, <laughs> they might survive. Just saying. Would you have stuck around Haddonfield? That's like that's like s insisting on, no, I need to stay in this cabin on Crystal Lake. <laughs> I don't care how many times Jason comes back and kills people. I need to stay in this cabin on Crystal Lake. You kind of deserve it, don't you? If you don't leave Haddonfield, you're just asking for it. <laughs> it's true. Asking for it. Did you check the bus station? <laughs> That's usually where the baby is left. Oh my god. Plot twist. That doesn't make any sense. <clears throat> yeah, so the producer's cut, although it is kind of, you know, like I said, I've only seen it once. I'm not that familiar with it. It is... You know, fucking weird, and they tried to do something with the material, but admittedly, it's a stretch. But to take what is already a script that is really weird and a stretch, and then to just jumble it up in a shitty fucking theatrical cut, of course it's going to make no sense. I don't know. I just don't understand. Like, if they want... Like, what What do they want? What is the purpose to any of this? Do they want Michael to kill his whole family so that they can prevent whatever, some kind of mass genocide of the human race? Why did they have him have sex with his niece and then have another baby? I know, I know I'm talking about the producer's cut. That doesn't happen in this one. This one, in that sense, kind of makes more sense than the producer's cut. Because that's that would probably be the biggest flaw, right, about the producer's cut. If the whole thing is he's got to kill his family to stop this, you know, big fucking genocide from happening on the human race, why continue to... The, the, the fucking bloodline. <laughs> in, in that one and only sense, the theatrical cut actually makes a better case than the producer's cut. Because we don't, we don't know that Jamie is pregnant with Michael's child. As far as we know, she just had another kid, and that's another goddamn Myers family member he's got to take out. I'm asking the real questions here like Geraldo Rivera. <laughs> I want to know I, mean, I got to get down to the truth <sighs> This fucking movie Look at that hallway <laughs> I like how they always just have a long Empty Crazy looking hallway in these movies The, the fucking light bill must be insane, because look at all those lights. <laughs> he showed up with his gun, because that always did him any good, right? <laughs> that gun always helped. <laughs> All right, let's listen to what this fucker has to say. Evil. That's what That's what Loomis has been saying the whole time.
Was that necessary? Did you really need to clock an old man like that? Um, well, I mean, at least we got that whole, uh, hospital slaughter coming up <laughs> where Michael gets a little crazy with the old machete and just starts slashing some peeps that I guess he's shouldn't be killing. So that's cool. We got that. <laughs> God, I'm trying to find positives in this. I think I might, you know what? Hold up. I'm looking down into the bottle of my beer. Down there at the bottom, I see a positive, and I want to get to it. So I'm going to drink this beer. I'm going to get to that positive. Hold up. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Fucking Red Hook. Who knew? Who knew? You think you found all the best beers, and then all of a sudden, some. I'm going to give it. I'm going to put it at number three. Straight up. Putting it at number three. And it might even. It might even rise higher on my favorite beer list. I'll give it a few more tries. It might actually rise at number two. You know what? I'm so fucking glad I got Halloween H2O coming up next. <laughs> oh, that, I'm going to have so much more fun doing the Drunken Terry for Halloween H2O. And no. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'll do a, a Drunken Terry for 237. Did you see that? Um, I don't know if I'm going to do a Drunken Terry for Rob Zombie's movies. You guys let me know. Do you really want... I mean, are you willing to sit through those movies with me? That's what I need to know. Look at right here. I had to say it one more time. I'm sorry, but he pooed. <laughs> Look at Tommy right here. He's poo. There it goes. <laughs> He's a, when he twitched, that was a poo coming out. <laughs> he was like, Michael, oh, fuck. I released my bowels. <laughs> I didn't mean to. But when you see Michael Myers... It just kind of, it just has that effect. Okay, what was I saying? <laughs> oh yeah, what I was saying. Let me know if you actually want me to do a drunken Terry for Rob Zombie's Halloween one and Halloween two. Will you actually watch those with me? Because if you won't, I ain't gonna bother. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> she's. I don't know if that's overacting or not, because you would be pretty scared but she's like oh god oh fuck i want to say i don't know because if michael grabbed me by the hair like that i would probably be screaming like a bitch too <laughs> i want to say it's overacting but really it's probably pretty pretty accurate <laughs> would be screaming like a little girl don't act like you wouldn't be I don't care how manly you think you are. Michael Myers grabs you by the fucking hair. You're going to scream like a bitch. <laughs> That's just what's going to happen. She's rather calm for having just been attacked by Michael Myers. <laughs> just saying. Ha ha ha. Everybody has a good laugh. Ha <laughs> I I I don't know. I want to say that I I sort of think that the screenwriter for this movie, Danielle Ferrans, however you pronounce his name, I think he might have been inspired by the the plot of Halloween 3 a little bit. I really think so. Both movies are about sacrifice, aren't they? S some kind of sacrifice has to take place because it's Samhain. This shot looks awkward because it looks like he's doing her from behind. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
It looks like they got caught having sex, and they, you know, I've had that moment. I've had that moment where you're doing someone in in semi public or straight out public. I've done it both, and you have to stop, and you both look awkward, just like that, dude. <laughs> you have to stop mid thrust and be like, "Oh shit, did they see us?" I I mean, I'm just keeping it real. That's happened to me more than more than once. <laughs> <laughs> and and I know I'm not the only one. There are fucking people out there that know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Everybody's all about the public sex. You know you are. Don't lie. <laughs> Shit. You know it's not that it sex gets boring because sex is always awesome. But sometimes you're just like, damn. If we just do it like in this alley, <laughs> that'd be kind of cool, right? There's that there's that risk if we might get caught. Shit, I've done some I've had some public sex and you do it, you have to stop and listen look like look all awkward mid thrust and wait for like the person to walk and keep going and then you just then you finish. <laughs> you know you know that you agree. <laughs> you you've had that you've had that experience, haven't you? <laughs> I have a few times. I'm just saying, damn, public sex is awesome. <laughs> you can quote me on that. All right, this is the scene I was talking about. Michael just goes ape shit, kills all these peeps. Why? I couldn't tell you. But there's a strobe light. I'm fighting. The seizure that's trying to come on right now, but it's an awesome scene. Oh, about to fucking start twitching though. Seizure alert. Ah. Why did Michael kill all those people? Because he's Michael goddamn fucking Myers. Even even if he is really out of shape. <laughs> You know what? If I was running from a psycho killer, the last thing I would do is trip and fall down. Dude, my senses would be so fucking heightened, I'd be like an Olympic fucking triathlon. I'm telling you. I'd be running faster than I ever ran in my whole life. I'd be jumping over buildings and shit. <laughs> Every, why does everybody trip? I don't get that. I'd be hauling major ass. Breaking world records. I've said that on a past drunken Terry, but I mean that. I mean it. I would be. I'd be hauling that much ass. I'd be a blur. Somebody just like see me just fly by. Go, what the fuck was that? And then there's Michael walking up. Oh, he looks like shit in this movie. He really does. I don't get it. All right, so we're fucking just about through with this disaster piece. There's a fetus because I don't know why. Just a fetus. I don't know what any of that meant. Fucking theatrical cut. <laughs> Makes even less sense than the other one. Alright, yeah, we're coming up on the end of this shit. Thank God, too. And thank you for sitting through this with me. Whether you're a fan of this movie or not. If you're a fan of the movie, thank you for humoring me. Putting up with all my complaints and shit. If you're not... Thank you for actually putting this movie on and sitting through it one more fucking time so that we could get drunk and make fun of this shit. Now Michael's about to get beat with a pipe. Because <laughs> that's how you want to end your Halloween. <laughs> Michael Myers getting beat with a pipe. <laughs>
Um, yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, we got a few more minutes left to this this fucking train wreck. Let's drink some beer, shall we? I want to say, real quick, I just want to say, I think this is one of the drunkest I've ever gotten on one of these drunken terries. I hope I wasn't too obnoxious. But if I was, all that means is you weren't drunk enough. All right, let's chug. <clears throat> I can't believe I've got I have so many dislikes on my review of this movie. <laughs> now it's personal. Now I'm going to call everybody out. Fuck all of you. Why are you disliking this shit? Um. <laughs> all right. All right. I won't go down that road. It's true, though. I do have quite a few dislikes on my review of The Curse of Michael Myers. And it's not even like... It's not even like... That I'm upset that people have a different opinion than me. I'm not upset, necessarily, that peeps like it. But what I'm upset about is that it can't be explained why they like it to an extent that makes sense. Because for every, like, everything that someone could say about this movie, I could totally tear it apart in a reasonable way that actually makes sense. Of course, of course, yes, we are talking about the theatrical cut. Which I think is universally agreed that is mostly pretty bad. A lot of the peeps that defend this movie are uh, fans of the producer's cut, which is better, but still, still, nah, you know. Here it comes. Mike's getting beaten by a pipe. By Paul Rudd, of all people. <laughs> Beaten by a pipe by Paul Rudd. That's not the way you want... That's not what you want it to say on your tombstone. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess it depends on who you are. I guess some people would probably like... <laughs> you know what? Not, you know what? I would actually... I don't want to die that way, but if that was on my tombstone, I wouldn't complain. <laughs> Eric, here lies Eric Harrison, 1979 to 2015. Cause of death, got beat by Paul Rudd. <laughs> Fucking Ant-Man. Oh God, here it is. <sighs> get out of Haddonfield, please. For the sake of God, get the fuck out of Haddonfield. This is it, man. This was Donald Pleasant's last on-screen performance. And it's it's a disgrace and it's sad, but still got to give it up to the Donald It makes no sense. It makes no sense. <sighs> well, that was something. <laughs> it's funny that I had, I really had to get extra drunk for this one. <laughs> oh. Thanks for fucking suffering with me, guys. I got to do some of the... I, I mean, at some point I need to do uh, some more of the Friday the 13th movies. I've got five and six to do next. 
But yeah, it's cool as far as the Halloween franchise goes. I got a uh, H2O coming up. That'll be fun. I'm going to have fun with that. I don't have a lot of complaints about H2O. I really don't. I enjoy the movie. Some people complain about it. I mean, I see those remarks. And sometimes I can kind of get it because people compare it to Scream a little bit. Uh, but I, the movie makes more sense than this shit. So yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun. Plus, I'll be able to tell you guys all about my, my fun little LSD experiment while watching Halloween H2O. But anyway, um, yeah, like I said, then I gotta do, uh, I gotta do some some of the Fridays. But let me know if you actually want me to do a um, do Drunken Terry's for the Rob Zombie movies. I'm not even sure if I want to, to be honest with you. Because I feel like I would be overly serious and wouldn't have enough fun. But hey, if anybody out there is actually gonna watch it, shit, I'll watch it with you. Why not? Anyway, all right, let's move on. This badass that you guys fucking watch this shit with me. And that you continue to watch all this crap with me. I'm really drunk, so of course I'm going to go and drink more beer. <laughs> and I'll catch you on the next video, whatever it happens to be. Peace out. I love you guys. You're awesome.